So I got a few exhaust manifolds here to resurface and these ones are off that six liter diesel that uh, I just uh, did the four usual things to the heads for. And I'm actually not sure what these are for. I don't always ask, but uh, these ones are finished. They're a little awkward to do, but you just take your time and figure it out. And I did over, I did those over there. So there's my setup. And oh, I kind of had them. Oh, let's see. I kind of had them sitting a little bit. Ah, something along the lines of that. Now we're not going to get into uh, how I dealt with those ones though, but instead we're going to get in with how I deal with these ones because I actually have a bit of a routine for these ones, whereas I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. So I'm going to uh, discuss these after I clean up that. diesel manifolds here because I do these quite a bit I actually do have a little bit of a routine and I'm able to uh, set these up and get the job done fairly quickly and ends up being a, a half decent paying job so first thing I do is I'm gonna come in here with a wire wheel and I'm just gonna buff off all this crap that's on them and I'm gonna check them with a straight edge just so I can see exactly how bad they are and what I'm dealing with. Alright, so I got most of the goop off there. And now I'm just going to check these with a straight edge. And you know, this one's actually not too bad. How do I go about setting this up? First off, I actually am going to start off with this on the table sitting just like that. And probably can't see it from way over there, but I got this collector hanging off the edge of the table here. That way there, this whole flange sits nice and flat on my table. Now with this sitting flat on my table, we got a little bit of rock in it, but like I said, this one's actually not too bad. So basically is what I do. I just kind of eyeball the edge of the flanges here with my T-slot. Running a couple of T-nuts. Appropriate link studs, that wouldn't be it. There we go. couple T-stop slots, T-slot stops, Duh. there we go, and now we need a couple one, two, three blocks. Couple step blocks, Our clamps. couple nuts. Run them down. Push this manifold up against my T-slot stops. Give this a snug. So you're probably thinking, why the hell would you set it up like that, Jay? 
Let me show you. It's the time we get that table rotated. Look at that, we just fit. I'm going to grab my dial here, my ray dial. Set that up on my spindle. And is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to run a dial across these really quick. Basically set the gauge at the zero-ish and let them run across those ribs. Look how straight those are. Or uh, look, you know, nice and square to the table setup. But not perfect, right? So you get the idea, right? So I'm going to take this face mill. Pop that in there. Just let it touch. There we go. And check that out. I took off minimal material and we got a nice flat spot all the way across here. This edge right here I know now is going to be exactly 90 degrees from this face. So now that I did that quick little skim and we touched every rib. Uh, I did that in uh, quite, a, quite a heavy feet limit. I did that at a quarter inch per revolution. So that's a pretty rough beat. I'm gonna go back over. I'm, I'm gonna increment that just a couple thousandths. I'm gonna do uh, the pass one more time the other way. I'm just gonna do a little less speed. Uh, I'm gonna crank that speed up a little too since you guys are gonna be like standing right there. And uh, I'm just gonna make sure that that's nice and flat and smooth for me.
Alright, that's awesome. So, I'm going to do the same thing with this one now. clamp on like that I'm gonna come here with my little scale and I'm gonna measure how far from the edge of my table that flange is now I'm not sure how good we can see this but we're at about 30 mil from the edge here and we're about 40 mil from the edge here I gotta get that Okay, 
Interruptions, interruptions. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, talking about the graduations. Yeah, I like working on the metric side just when I'm lining something up like that because I, I can see if it's only a few millimeter out and I can just tap it straight. So that's what I do. So we got, let's say, well, 39 and 31. So just by lining that up by eye, I got it kind of pretty close. And is all I do is I just tap the end that's furthest. About a 34. That's about a 34. So that's lined up pretty close. And that way there, when I start doing my dialing, because I'm going to dial this to make sure it's close, we want to take off minimal material and not change the angle. Uh, I'm going to have minimal adjusting to do on the machine mold during my dialing session. So let's get this thing clamped down tight. My dial, oh, right here. All right, let's let's see how close that came out together. All right, so. Oh, look at that, zero. Zero, negative two, negative two, negative eight. Beauty. So we just kind of tap the edge of the table here a little bit. Let's try that. It's actually pretty uh pretty flat, hey eh, guys. Alright, so we got that dialed in. Lock the table, move the dial.
All right. Well, that came out pretty nice. This one wasn't all that bad. So, so that was a roughing pass. It uh, probably could seal, who knows, but uh, I can definitely get a lot better finish than that. So now that I know everything's all nice and straight and true and the way we want it, I'm going to change my feet a little bit and uh, I'm going to just uh, return the cutter back to the other end and do a finish pass on this thing. this quite a bit faster. Um, if you do the math for carbide insert with cast iron, that diameter, yes, I could ramp the RPM up quite a bit on that. But that's not exactly the most rigid setup. So it's what I find is if I ramp the speed up sometimes on these, I'll just use the word term, skimpy setup, uh, you get a vibration or a chatter and it just takes a little more effort to machine it out. So I'm usually not really in a hurry. I believe slow and steady wins the race. We'll just let it run out like this. So here's the drive system. This is a clutch. And right now we're in forward. If we went that way, it'd be reverse. And I'm talking spindle direction. And then these two levers here are my, my, uh, my speed gears. So this one here, up here, uh, it's a little dirty and grimy right now, but we have A and B. And then on this lever here, we got uh, C, D, E, and F. So right now we're in A and we're in D. So if we come up to my little chart right here, uh, no, sorry, I'm, that, that's B, sorry, B, D. So right now we're doing 154 RPM. And if we come down here, this is the feed selector. So we got G, J, H, M, K, L. And we're on the H and the K right now. So once again, we come back up to our feed selector, which reads in uh, inches per revolution of the spindle, kind of like a lathe typically does. And uh, what did I say we're at? H and K, that's right. H and K is 25,000 per revolution. So I got five inserts in that face bill divided by 25 we're getting a, a 5,000 chip per two which is that's a pretty decent uh, finish uh, that's a triangular insert it's a little bit sharp I believe that's a 130 seconds corner on there so you know if we went to like 10 or 12 thousand per revolution it wouldn't be as nice as a finish it, it actually uh, we wouldn't want to try and hold exhaust gaskets in with an MLS gasket or a steel ship um, they could seep out, you know, they, they might end up being a little bit deep. So I just run it at 25 like that, that's 5,000 chip per tooth, I get a really nice finish. And same thing. Put our machine surface on these one, two, three blocks.
put the feed back to something a little more appropriate. Feed a couple more cell. There we go. An easy one and just a little little trick I know for uh, you know getting these things set up kind of quick it doesn't work on all manifolds but it works pretty good on these ones as I think you might have just seen um, I'm not sure how much you can see but uh, you know I just took a little skim off these ribs here and everything lined up real nice for me so that's an easy one Hope you guys thought that was somewhat interesting and uh, thanks for tuning in guys. I'll catch you later.